My name is Ronnie Goodless and you're watching Toffee TV. Welcome to Toffee TV. This is the final word. Everton 1, Swansea City 2. I did not think those words would be coming out my mouth. Uh, we've got Matt Jones joining us once again. He still hasn't had a haircut. Um, when, we win, when we win, I'll get one. Wait, <laughs> and a shave, yeah. You'll look like stick of the dump. Um, <laughs> by the time we win. Hang on. By the time we win. You have actually had a haircut. I know, yeah. It's good, isn't it? Um, I was very angry last week, and I'm trying to not be angry by this because it's just the same old, same old, isn't it? It doesn't feel any different. It just feels like the same thing again. Okay, the performance was probably worse than what we've seen last few weeks, but all the same mistakes by all the same players are happening week in, week out, and I, I don't know. I just don't know what, what, what you can actually do to fix it because everything just seems self-inflicted to me. Discuss. <laughs> really? I mean, that's you know, that's me opening gambit on the whole thing, you know. So you know, it's, anger's not there really now for me. Just acceptance, apathy. Yeah. Just, but well, it's just basically now. I just think this is who we are. This is this was the this was the biggest fear for me before we appointed them that that this is how Everton would go, and and he did kind of he turned me around in that first season. But we've just gone for me. We're just a sexier version of Wigan. We've got better players. Yeah. We can't defend, and and I'm really trying. I've got this like little devil on my shoulder that is like, yeah, and there's like match fiction going on. Because <laughs> we just seem to just this is every week we just seem to can create the goals that people score against us so embarrassingly. Yeah, there's there's some core fundamentals in football, aren't there? And I said this on Twitter last night, and you need you need these things, and sometimes they're quite cliched, but you do need them if you're going to go anywhere. You need to have a good home record. You need to be able to defend. You need to have, you know, a solid structure as a team. You need to have players who work hard. You need to be able to cling on to Leeds. And we don't do any of that. We'll be we'll be following Leeds. We don't soon. do it. Following Leeds United. But uh, we, don't, we don't we don't do any of those those things. Like if if a manager went into a club, those were the things you'd expect them to sort out straight we were, away. And we, we mentioned this a bit like yeah. Harbour Har, which it seems a bit, you know, fair coat no knickers. And it seems to me now as if. We're, reg we're regressing. Like that was that was probably the worst performance of the season, I think, at the well, weekend. I don't want to talk about Martinez just yet because I want to leave that for now. But it was funny yesterday just seeing um, a few pundits. Jamie Redknapp. Uh, Jamie, why don't we do that? Jamie Carragher. So Jamie Redknapp got know, nothing to you say. Know, what are, what's he going to say? This four, is a corner flag. Four, corner flag. This is a studio. Goalkeeper. Um, Carragher said before the game. Season. Carragher said before the game. Basically, our defending just, just we don't learn. Uh, Sunes, Thierry Henry, Rude Huller, they all basically just... Stephen Hunt. Stephen yeah. Hunt, in a great Hunt. article, Brilliant good article. article, which is on our Twitter See account. See Michael Ball as well. He Michael Ball, but, but the people who are not attached to the club, they all just basically looked at it and went, well, look at what, like, you know, Henry, he mentioned the atmosphere. Now I know that's part of what has come out and what Martinez has said, but he said the atmosphere, he said, when you used to go to Goodison, They'd get at you, and then the fans would get at you. Do you know what I mean? The team would start it, and then the the fans would follow. And he said, "You, you knew you had to play." You know, the likes of Sunes saying this. You know, get the fundamentals right first when you're in a. You know what's wrong, so just get that sorted, yeah. and everything else will fall into place. You might nick a one nil here, or a, you know, whatever two one or something like that. And obviously, Carragher said the same thing. You know, players are taking chances that at this moment. They can't afford to say, uh, can't afford to do. And then you've got people on the flip side, like um, Rio Ferdinand coming out going, well, the atmosphere at Goodison Park is just not helpful for any of these people. And then people jump on that and they go, yeah, the atmosphere is absolutely toxic. And I didn't think it was that bad yesterday. I just think no. they're quiet. Most of the games, they're quiet. And, there's some, and then when, when certain things happened, you got, like, obviously a few moans and then a hard time, you got boos, which... I don't jump join in with, but I understand why people do it. That's like a time when the game has stopped and people feel like they can be vocal. And it, it's like all these little things and people are having all the different say. But the only man who actually matters or the only players that matter are just got doing the same things again and again and again. And as you just said, we're getting worse at those things that last week at Chelsea for 20 minutes we looked great. Yesterday there was no part of that game where we actually looked dangerous. I thought a few crosses flashed across the box. That was it. People moan about the atmosphere. Obviously, you'll get you get the ones who uh, 
cups always awful. Yeah. So, you know, you should never criticise the team. You should never boo. You should never do. The greater talent, other people, what they shouldn't mm. do. So it's kind of going against when other people say things. You can't say people shouldn't be yeah. saying this by giving your opinion because everyone's entitled to an opinion. The flip side of that, obviously, the booing. People pay the money, they're entitled mm. to boo. If you don't, you're not happy, you're paid. 40 quid, 45 quid, 48 quid for some games and you don't like what you see. It's up to you. Mm. Do what, whatever you want to do. A team, you paid the money to be entertained. Break it down, it doesn't matter. You're there to be entertained. That's what you go to. The team, I don't get entertained by John Stone, Seamus Coleman, Leighton Baines, Furnas, Murray and Tim Howard having 600 passes to each other in a game. It doesn't entertain me, it bores me. Mm. Silly. The entertainment comes in the final third not on the edge of our box. So that atmosphere ain't going to change. Yeah, against City, it was decent because it was a big game. But for me, Swansea was a much bigger game because we are in, whether you like it or not, we are on the cusp of being in a relegation fight because the form has gone down a pan. There's nothing in that team. There's not one bit of character in that side. And we lost probably the only character we had after 10 minutes or whatever it was yesterday when Bezic went off and... But at the moment, we're spiralling or sleepwalking, whichever way you want to look at it, into another relegation fight. It really annoys me, this criticism of the fans and the way Martin has kind of underhandedly said it after the game yesterday. And there's been a few other times this season, hasn't there, when the players have kind of hinted at the fact that the fans are, are contributing to this. But what, what I think, in modern football, that what goes on on the pitch is reflected in the stands. If you, if you play a, a passive style of football on the pitch, the fans aren't going to be, you know, up and chanting. That's just, that's just the demographic of the modern day supporters completely changed now. Mm. And if you, yesterday, we didn't touch the ball for two minutes in a, a game against an, well, I'm, I'm going to say they were awful sides, Swansea. They've had a terrible, only won one away game, they've had, had, and that yeah, was Villa. They've had a terrible season. They've got a new manager who's not a cousin to the Premier League. And as soon as we kicked off, we just let them have easy possession for two minutes. And what, you think back to our best games at home this season, Man City, one you mentioned there, Chelsea. In those two games, we were out of the blocks quick in both of them, getting tackles in, putting the other teams under pressure, and the fans the crowd responded. responded. And that's just that's just how it is now. And, it, and if Roberto Martinez doesn't realise that's the best way to get get the best out of Goodison Park after three years in a job, then there's something going really badly wrong. And it doesn't help as well when players are getting involved with fans, as we've seen over the last few weeks. John Stone's doing it, Tim Howard doing it. It comes that, back to bite you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that sort of thing. Just Exactly, yeah, the two of them just involved. Bit. But, you know, it's just... That's an easy excuse for me, saying, you know, oh, I can't remember the exact terminology you used, but he said, mm. you know, we're struggling to, to free ourselves, I believe. But that's not good enough. These players that's have bollocks. got to stand up and be counted now. Also, you know, people... Have a, also, people have been using the word... The fans, like it's every single person, mm. like the fans, like, and then they go on about some people go on about the away matches. The away matches are good because it's a younger core, it's like us against them, isn't it? You know, we're home against the way. A lot of people have had been drinking and stuff as well, that adds to it all. And that, you can understand the away, but the home games, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I think most Everton fans have been brought up watching the Moy style. And certainly the Joe Royal style of get up and get at them, get in people's faces. You know, Everton have always had that. Though. Exactly, Does that's what I'm saying. Like I'm besides saying besides in the, the late seventies when I was watching the, the eighties, we had the best team in Europe. And mm. I'll make a minute into the game, Deed and Bracewell will have cut someone up. That's, that's it. Exactly. Straight on, hunted them down, and the crowd reacted. And that's our, that's our, that's almost like being passed from father to son. That. That style, you know, it's not even about like, <laughs> we always go back to this, but it's like the Phil Neville tackle. That's what Evertonians love. That's why Bessage is on, loved. Yeah. Bessage on Tory in the League yeah, Cup. Exactly. That's why, that's why Bessage is loved. Bantam. That's what we love as fans. And it might be it might be like going back to a different era or, you know, it might be like look as pretty, but that's what we love right. as fans. Like, oh, that's what gets the us The thing going. I always look for at home, and I always think it helps. And when you go away, you see this. Get a shot on target within the first couple of minutes. Mm. Get out the blocks quickly. Get a shot. Make that away team feel like they're under pressure because then they won't settle. This style of play that we have is totally the opposite of that. We allow the away team to get settled. They come to us yesterday 
like you said before, they won one away game. I watched them against Sunderland last week. They were dreadful. They were dreadful on Monday against Watford. They ground out a the result. They've been poor. They've never, ever beaten us in the history. Till in, yesterday. In the league, yeah. In the league. Yeah. Uh, they beat us in that cup yeah, yeah. When, he, when he threw that away last year by playing. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, you know, so they should have come here. We should have been right out the block straight away. Snapped them in a couple of tackles. Got shots in. Mm. And like you said, we just gave them the ball. That first 10 minutes, we touched the ball off five times. This is Swansea City. And you're like, this style of play ain't going to get anyone on its side. They're not going to get the crowd bouncing away from home. Why does... 800 fans come to Goodison and sing the whole way through, you know, and out sing yeah, but because that's, that's what away fans that's, do. That's, 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 all, that's, that's away football, fans isn't do. it? That's all football, so, that's not just Goodison. I've got mates who are reds and they say Liverpool's like they can mug. Everyone's and feels yeah. like they're mug, but they go away. They go to every away game. Away. Said they don't stop singing. Why don't they do it at Anfield? Why don't they do it United? Why don't they do it? But like you said, the fans need a trigger now, don't they? Fans need a trigger to get going. <clears> they need to, unless it's like a massive game, you need something to get mm -hmm. the crowd going. And I, I unless was, you're I flying, yeah, unless you're flying. I, I mentioned this on on Twitter either last night or this morning, and someone said to me, "Oh, we're trying to play a counter-attacking style of play." And I think if if a team that low down the league, in fact, if any team that comes to Goodison, I I don't want to see us sitting back and no. allowing them the ball early on. I want to see us putting them under pressure early. I'm and being... even even if you're going to try and counter-attack, there's a way to defend. You don't wait for the opposition to make mistakes and give you the ball. You go hunting for it and win it back yourself. Matt. Any any team coming down to Goodison, right? Even Carlisle next week. If I was their manager, I would just be all I'd be doing all this week is the minute their defenders get it, put three men on them, run at them because they will give you they've got a mistake in them. Any team, but that's all Swansea don't even have a centre forward. When we had the ball, Sigurdsson and IU pressed, you know that John Stone just got a mistake in him. Go and press him. Howard's got a mistake in him. It's dead easy. There's nothing complicated about it. And that's why we are dreadful at home. But We've won three home games since April. It's it's the end of January. So the next time we play in the league, it's February. Ten months, three home games. It's embarrassing. We've won ten uh, since the beginning of last season. Ten wins at home and ten losses at home as well. Um, and so I, to... I've seen a thing before. It was comparing this season with Moises last season. I know, you know, it's Moises is not the answer, and a lot of people have different. A lot of people have different views of Moises' era, but I think... Um, Moises' last season, we were Last brilliant. season, I think yeah. we got 42 points at home. 42 points at home. We got beat once, I think, for the entire season. We won... I think we won... We were, Moises' last season, we were brilliant. Yeah. The, the football, Pienaar and Baines on the left, Coleman and Morales on the right, they were fantastic. The only thing Moyes' team was shy of was like Lukaku mm. in the form he was in. About three or four weeks ago. But it, if you but put him into though, that side, you'd have been amazing. The home form has been <clears> decimated <throat> under Roberto Martinez, and that's what you've got to base all your football. Because you always know that you, you, any any football team, your bread and butter is your own games. You win them, and then you know you try and get it. You try and get like one in every three away mm. wins. You know what I mean? And that's, people used to say win twelve or thirteen home games, yeah, and then pick up six <laughs> away wins. You're at Europe. With, with that cat and then you draw a, lose, lose a few draw a few you know away from home and things six wins out of 19 away games it, like you just said that's roughly one and three yeah. you know that gets you into those European places well three, I'm afraid to say you know February next time we play at home three is the, wins but this yeah. is the reason Shocking. why I, I mean people go the atmosphere is terrible that's the reason three home wins is the reason hmm? you know last season we, we, we'd only had about the same at this hmm. time it was Awful, and it only, it only kicked got us going because we decided to start being a little well, bit I think, more direct. I think, I think we realised we were in exactly. I think, I think the players after the took Stoke over. Game. I think the players took over. I don't think the fans voicing the displeasure is necessarily a bad thing. I think these players aren't molly coddled enough as it is. Exactly. You know, the, the, everyone at the club. I'm sure we'll come onto, onto this a bit later, but I don't feel like anyone's under any pressure to perform. And the fact that if the players showed a bit more urgency that the fans have got, mm. then we'd be in a much, much and also healthier that, position. Yeah. When they go to away games, what did they get off the off the, off the home fans when they're playing away? Yeah. What did they get? Did yeah. they get the people, you know, uh, wave scarves and exactly. all that? Well, well, John Everton, you've done great there. The top players anywhere can deal with anything. You look, you look at Ronaldo, you look at the, just the stick he must get. You look at you look at someone like David Beckham. Suarez. That year, that Suarez. year Beckham uh, came back from the uh, World Cup. He was ripped oh, okay. a bit everywhere, but he stood up and that made yeah, him the player. Suarez used to just... Th 
He loved it. Thrive on it. And, yeah. You know, remember when Moy said to him, oh, he's a diver, he scored, and just went over and dived in front of him, just basically said, fuck you, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, this is what I... Everywhere he went, he loved it. He loved it. It made him... The, he, he, he fed on it. And yet, people are going, oh, you can't say that to them. Like, I'm not someone who will sit here and go, like, you see them on Twitter and they're having direct goals with them. I'm not into that. No, That's no. not me. I'm not into that. You know, I'm a coward. I'll have a go with them and not put the tag on. But, uh, you know... <laughs> well, what, they don't need to see it. But no, why, exactly. Why no, exactly. You're not, it's not, that's abuse. But, it's what, but when you're at the match, when you're at the match, you, you sit there and you voice your concerns because you've paid your money. And they're earning that money that you're paying. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them players are on 60, 70, whatever thousand pound a week and they can't take a little bit of criticism now i understand if it's it's criticism which is affecting the play i don't know how that would actually happen because loads of people are like well you know it does affect the play i don't see how it affects the play because they're professional footballers if like, that's fragile then you shouldn't exactly exactly. That's, exactly exactly they're not good enough as far that. as I, if they're not they're not good enough if if that's what makes them fragile and i think you know going back to what before you mentioned stephen naismith stephen naismith you know that's a man who's tough as nails not not a brilliant footballer in any sense, but has made himself, put himself on that level where he could take anything. And you think the stick he took in that first season or whatever, when he probably had massive issues with his knee, and he just sucked it all up and went, you know what, I'm going to be a better player from yeah. this. And he won the fans and he over. stuck on the wing. Yeah, <laughs> but he won the fans over. Mm. You know, and, and this is, I just don't get this at all about why fans think players need to have this big arm wrapped around them. You had the likes of Distan last season who was coming out and having a go with fans and they were having a go back. Distan used to just take it and give it. Yeah. Now, people, it might not have been great all the time, but at the, but at the same time, he did take it and he gave it and it was it was a mutual thing. Whereas people are like, oh, you can't you can't boo them. That fellow over there just paid 50 quid. If he wants to boo them, let him yeah. boo them. If it affects them that much, then they should, they're in the wrong game. They should go and become nursery teachers or something, I don't know. But all in, this is the problem, is that everyone is looking for excuses for how bad they are. People have seen someone today saying, we've just been unlucky and things don't... Martin has said we were unlucky. Yeah, but the fans are buying into it. Some fans buy into it. We've just been unlucky. I think that's wearing thin now. This is, listen, you'd always say, don't you, about a manager in these three years. After three years, you can tell. Some managers only get a year at back big clubs and at clubs that want to be relevant, they change their managers if they don't perform. Then right. that's, that's it, right? Let's stop talking about the manager for two No, minutes. no, I'm talking we'll about... This, I will, this isn't really oh, about the manager, this is about the fans. Yeah. But people are now starting to accept the fact... My worry is we're starting to have a fan base now that is more concerned about accepting irrelevance and Everton are becoming very, very irrelevant. And it's coming to the point where these same people will be cry arsing in the summer when Lukaku bounces out the door and John Stones bounces out the door. Mm. They're the ones that'll be whinging. But those two players are half the reason why we're where we are. Mm. Rom's mm. been magnificent up until Christmas, magnificent. Been, he's gone up a level, but the last few weeks, people might go, he's injured. Well, I'm sorry, if he's injured, he shouldn't be on the pitch. Mm. But if you're on that pitch, you pull your tripe out. Because Tim Cahill used to play with injections and everything and run through brick walls. I'm not seeing a centre-forward wanting to run through brick walls for me. I'm seeing a centre-forward walking around a pitch. I'm seeing a centre-half that looks as though he's read too many papers, newspaper stories about himself, but he only thinks he's Pele. When he did, or oh, sorry, Beckham Bobble, when he the kid can't defend at the moment. I think he thinks he's Pele as well. When he, when he came in... <laughs> He remember when we won three 0 at Newcastle and he had the headband on and he was yeah, still yeah. throwing his head in the way of shots and he was he just he put himself in front of everything. He, did, he was a defender. Yeah, so that was first. it. And now he was a defender first. Was, everyone's on. He brings the ball. I've seen people going. You, I don't mind if he makes them mistakes because I don't want to see him just kick it clear. And I'm going. You, so you don't mind about the penalty in the last minute against Stoke? No, that was. A, you don't mind about him diving in at Raheem Sterling and it was a pen. You don't mind about some costing us to both these goals here, no, you're not bothered. Sound, I think, I think you said it yesterday on Twitter, Pat. I disagree about one. He's going he's gonna, to, um, you know, it's great him learning these mistakes and making these mistakes at Everton, but by the time he's learned from them all, he won't be here. Yeah. That's no good for us. But some people that's love no, that. that yeah. Some people, are, he's young, let him make the mistakes. So, yeah. so we are irrelevant, so well done for making us uh, Let's yeah. talk about that first goal a minute, because I think we have got a slight difference in this. Um, <laughs> I've watched this goal so many times as I put yesterday on Twitter it's like JFK with the Sapruda film watching 
JFK gets shot in the head. This is how many times I've watched. It's like so you're blaming JFK. Bear, bear can still, no, it was uh, the, the fell on the grassy knoll. Oh, um, <laughs> but go! I watched it. I watched it like from from the point of like when Stones gets the ball. St Stones gets the ball, and when he gets the ball, he does that thing where he's he's got a ball on with Oviedo, but it's not a straightforward ball, especially the fact that Oviedo's playing right back and yeah. I understand that. So he's done that thing where he's shuffled inside, which that's his first mistake. Get, get, that's his first mistake. He's then he's then inside. Then an all play defenders are taught not to kick it inside. Are you, are you with me on that? I'm just like you. you be you with I'm going to strip it down in a minute. That's but fine, yeah, man. Right. Then this is where I just I, I the back pass. It's not short. It's just it's slow. What it is. But my problem with this is and. I know people disagree with me. I'm watching Howard, and Howard doesn't even. Howard is. Howard, the ball's coming to Howard, and he and he takes that. He takes a step back to kick it right. No, he does. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually shaking my head because I can't believe he did do I that. Know. But he took a step back, <laughs> and then and I I actually seen him do this. He catches Ayu in the corner of his eye, and that's when he runs at the ball, and that's when he boots Ayu. And for me, I, I just can't... That's what's the unacceptable part for me. Mm. I know it's a bad ball from Stones. I understand that. And he shouldn't be... He should He should be just kicking it out first time. But we all know what he's like. And we all know why he does that. Because the manager just allows him to do it every week. But but for me, Howard should just be running towards that ball. He just doesn't see Ayu. Yeah. He just does not get onto the fact... Now, Stones possibly should have seen Ayu and, and thought, and gone. What I shouldn't be passing to because the other week when he was doing Cruyff turns, it was to avoid giving the ball to Howard. So from that point of view, it was his mistake for just thinking about giving yeah. it to Howard. But Howard just—it's the fact that Howard hasn't got any vision of the player being there whatsoever, and that's what—that's what I can't understand. And I also can't understand why, having made that decision or having to see him, how. He's then decide, well, I will just go and kick him in the box, or I will attempt to do a 50-50 tackle on a centre forward in the box, where, like you said about Stones before, any percentage of getting it wrong, and it's a penalty, yeah. when the player is not got is not going anywhere. He's a 36-year-old, and everyone knows I love saying his age. He's a 36-year-old who is making mistakes like that. And when it comes down to a 22-year-old who should be getting... Is he 22, John Stone? 21, 22? 21, yeah. Who should really be starting to learn the lessons of how to defend against the 36-year-old who's just gone. Then for me, it's the goalie's, it's the goalie's fault because at the end of the day, what he's done is just not had any awareness that he's there and just booted him. Full stop. I'm going to agree with him before you have yours. <laughs> but, 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 but I know what but, you're no, going to no, say but, isn't but, wrong. It's just a different point but, of view. But it was a moment for me which was indicative of a player who is past his best because his instincts were slow. He wasn't aware of what was around him. And I, like you, watched it a few times last night. And it, everyone do it if you want. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you stop it, if you, if you, if you stop it on your phone yeah. and when Stones passes the ball and then stop it again when the foul's committed, Howard's in the same place both times. So he's seen the pass coming taking a step and a half back because he takes a little shuffle and then takes a big step back yeah. and then rushes forward well, the and reason I The reason I was so adamant that it was that it was Howard's fault at the time was just being sitting behind him. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Sitting behind him and seeing him do the double glance. Right in front of I, was right, I was right behind him and I could see him do that double glance and that instant, instantaneously told me that he just didn't have a clue that that centre forward but was it, there. But it's a poor ball. But it is a poor be, ball. He'll be... He will have been encouraged to play that know, pass. He makes that. He does do that back pass about three times a game because this is the other thing. And I actually moan about it all the time mm. when you see one of our fullbacks get the ball and they don't lash it, and then they give it to Howard, and then he lashes it, and everyone goes, well, "What's the point? What, what was yeah. the point in that? Why didn't Why didn't you just do that in the first place? It's something we do all the time. I think it's something to do with percentages. Okay. I honestly, I honestly do. <laughs> I honestly do. I honestly think he tells Howard to kick it because. If Stones kicks it and he doesn't get it, it'll ruin his pass percentage or something. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, that's how bad that's how bad I think this club Won is at times. I'm waiting for Bam. I'm just gonna but... sit back and just watch this go off. Just gonna go off. 
<laughs> it was John Stones, hundred percent. He's a defender. He's not. You say a, it was entirely his fault. He's. There's, there's. Explain to me why a centre half is rolling up, but he can't kick. That's like an IT fella not being able to go in and switch your computer on. Mm. The lad, listen, he's 21. I don't care if he's 15. He's been playing football for years. It was shocking. It was irresponsible, pathetic defending. People can laud him all he wants. He's Teflon. That's my nickname for him because nothing sticks with him. Everyone defend. Barkley only has to misplace one pass and he's the worst player anyone's ever seen. This clown at the back, goal after goal. Both goals are 100% his fault. Clear the ball. Clear the ball. Play it to Oviedo. Let Oviedo deal with it. Otherwise, do what or any good centre-half does and put it into touch and get your shape. But no, I'm going to drop the shoulder because I'm boss. And then I can't kick a football three yards. Once he's, once he's given the Kevin Brock back pass, which was the worst ball I've ever seen a centre-half play, worse than Russell Martin, Sir Milner at the weekend, it was pathetic because he was under no pressure. He can't even reach his goal he was there. Then the clown in goal makes a mistake because why he takes a step back is beyond me. He should be alert. He should be steaming. When that's knocked, he should be able to read. Because I could see when he knocked it, it was never getting there. So we should know that's not getting to me. He should have steamed out. And then if he has to slice it out for a corner, it doesn't matter. Grab stones by the throat, by all means. Knock him out, isn't by that, all means. Isn't that the problem, though? Like you just said there, I'm not, I'm not um, obviously saying someone should grab him by the throat and knock him out. I am. Isn't that the problem, though, that there isn't actually any... The, how would Howard, 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 Howard has a go at the ref for giving it? And stones goes like that to Howard. And then Howard just goes, like he was mm. attempting to save it. But at no point did Howard go, what, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. there was no, like, and no one turned around to Stones and went, what was that? Or no one turned around to Howard and went, what are you doing? There's no, there's there's no, there's no one is culpable for anything. And it was like team. yesterday as well, the other thing was, uh, there was a couple of decisions, handball decisions, and the only person who challenged the referee was Tom Cleverley. And the reason he challenged the referee is because he still got the Man United uh, chase the referee. Wins for every exactly. Game. And he was the only but one. I wish we had but 10 you know, players exactly. who wins so for that every... first goal, did you hear any vocal? Any from I never heard any vocal. Did you, did you hear how we're going, no, or I, never heard I don't how want it, or this, and again, clear? If that was... What what you know about Joe when he's played in goal is he talks to the Screams, players. He, yeah. whist, he, he he whistles at them sometimes. You know he shouts and he, he'll he'll direct them. Whereas that instance there, when there's clear indecision, that's when a senior player should be going clear it or I'll there's have no it. There's no and senior. And this is one of the players. reasons why I but think it is 36 years old. Barry's in Barry's eight, not a in captain. Eight, he's seen it. Barry's not, not a, a captain. Howard's not a captain. In fact, you might as well just give the armband to one of the young players. Give it to Barkley. Maybe then people will start respecting him a little bit more. I don't know. Give it, give it to someone Bessage. else. Give it to someone. Never fit. Yeah, that's the problem. So, yeah. Give it to someone who plays every week. Like Liverpool, and I've said this loads of times. Liverpool stripped Hippier of the captaincy and give it to Gerrard. And nobody on the team battered an eyelid because they all knew what he was worth, and all the fans were like, "Yes," because that was a man they could get behind. And I think that's something that needs to start happening at Everton Football Club. If he loves his youngsters so much. Throw an armband round one of them because no one just else is. A, just give it to Barkley. Because no one else just is. Just go ahead. Off you go. Because the fact, you know what I mean? It is. I just think, I know what you're saying about Howard. Once the ball's in transition, he is to blame because his reactions were pathetic. I don't know why he's not alive. So I don't know why he looks behind. I don't know why he steps back because he should be looking. But for me, the, the whole problem is avoided if Stones just defends. But that direction will be coming from the manager to play like that. Matt, you know what, mate? Honestly, you've got it. These players, we just spoke before about them being fragile mm -hmm. with the fans. When, are they, when is he going to take responsibility? When's it, the fans going to go? It's the director, though. He's a defender. He's a def Put the ball out. Put, put the ball out he of play. He doesn't, and I heard this last night, actually. I, I don't know what I was watching. Someone said the same thing. Enjoy being a defender. Remember that. Your, said it, remember that's yeah. your job. Remember that's your job. And like you just said before, like Newcastle when he had the headband on and he's he, he's running around banging headers everywhere, and and the fans are like, yes, that's what we want to you know see. What, you yeah. know what? He could, at that time, that season, the first season, I was amazed by him because he was a kid come in and he was grabbing people like Jack Yelkin and he was bollocking. He was the first to close things down. He was pulling people into position. He done it last year when we weren't playing well. He come back in and he was doing it. Do you know what he was this year? I'm sorry, but his head is elsewhere. Well, do you know what he was? His head is elsewhere. 
he was he was a better version of Mori in that first. Mori, Mori, obviously has that that in him where he's a, he can play football. There's no one there, but he no. but you can tell he just he wants, wants to defend. He wants yeah. to defend and he takes pride in it. And I just wish Stone's got that. It won't matter because he's going in the summer anyway. It doesn't really matter. He looks like he's gone now in the head yeah. if you look at him. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I, I defend. I know you. It annoys you that I defend them so much. But yesterday he was terrible. Awful. And I, I actually said last week on the show I thought he needed to be left out this game because it was starting to get a little bit. I, you could tell he was starting to get a little bit ahead of himself. And I just feel like I use the word loose. There's yeah. no control. No, no one's no. got any control over him. And if the manager hasn't got any control over him, and I actually thought Jack Yelka going back would 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 help because I Where feel like. He? I feel like Jack. Well, he's rested. rested apparently, you know, he yeah. played two games in a row. Um, I feel like when eight Jack, days and he was rested. Yeah, yeah. I feel like when Jack Elka plays, he, he does sort of get a grip of him. But the manager's got the manager's got no. The, it's almost like the manager's terrified to to to, to bollock him because he'll just he'll sulk and go, "Well, I'm leaving now." That's what I. That's that what struck it is. me. I, I I think the players have got a bit of free reign from him at times. I feel like he's just he just says kind of says some go on. You go and he gives them too much freedom in a way because the, I think a lot of them are too easily let off the hook. It's a, you know you mentioned Stones there not taking responsibility. Mm. He doesn't. People like Delafey doesn't track back much. Barkley doesn't track much. Lukaku at times looks a bit. You know there's that fine going around yesterday, wasn't there? Of just walking around, watch Swansea pass it around him. But and, think I think of- I think at times you can say, oh well, these sorts of players shouldn't be doing that. You know Stones, you should be encouraging into you know. To play out of the back, we should be, we shouldn't want him to be hoofing the ball up. We shouldn't want Lukaku chasing the ball around. We shouldn't want Barkley, you know, putting a shift in. But these players, it comes to a point where we say, why aren't they doing that? But do you, you need to be a very special player to, to not be as part of the structure, to not be as part of the team. And there's, there's too many in that the side best now. Players do you do swap, both, both. Yeah, do you exactly, swap yeah. your position with Leicester City. What do you mean, like in the league? Where we we could, yeah. Oh God, I'm yeah, not, yeah. Where we are, like. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. No, no, what, what, no. But I'm saying. So if anyone actually uses the brain and forgets that bollocks that you've all been fed mm. or that sorry some of you have been fed by Martinez mm. about this utopia type of football not go, just Martinez go and watch yeah. Leicester City because they're the most hard working exactly. team oh we're not hard right? working oh and my awful. god they're top of the league yeah. right? oh, we are... and, I, and I wouldn't have there's not many of their players that I would love Martinez to take them all day I wouldn't mind any of their we defenders. are the laziest team in the Premier that's what I'm saying we you are can't the laziest go. see well, people, have a, go, it, people have a go with De La Feu. Train. Dickhead though doesn't track back him. But well, I'll do. It, that's not his job. His job to provide goals for Lukaku. Who, if he'd have had anything about him yesterday, he'd have had a trick. But John, it's not John Stones' job to start attacks off for me. He's mm. a defender. If he wants to do that, then drag Gareth Barry out of midfield and put John Stones in midfield and say, like, play in midfield because mm. you're good. You're good enough to play. You've got ability wise. He'd be good enough to play this. Great on the ball. Put him in a Vieira role or Dia, like Spurs have done, and put get me two centre halves in who want to defend mm. because I take that all day long. I want to see Everton knocking it round on the edge of the opponent's box. I don't want to see it on the edge of my own box. I'm fed up with it and bored with it. And if people don't like it, well, everyone's entitled. But to But it's an not opinion. just Martinez. I'm yeah. bored. It's not just Martinez. It's it's other people are fed into this now. Like I've watched a few things in the last few days, and you just. Are Everton too good? Are Everton in a false false position? Shouldn't Everton be in the top six? Shouldn't Everton be in the top four? And as fans were sitting here going, no, actually no. And and we're actually looking at a bit of a relegation scrap now. And do we have do we have enough to get out of that? And people keep on going, but this is sure. You look at the squad and they've let him down and you know the football's great and aren't Everton great to watch? And you're just sitting there going, Isn't it boss that everyone thinks we're boss when we're actually not? And I've got a bit of a you know being with Bonnet about the media as well. Everyone's just letting them off with it. I've looked at all all the articles that have come out of this weekend and not one of them have challenged the manager. Not one. Not local. Not national. Not TV. Not one of them has challenged the manager. It's all like, don't you think you're in a false position? If it's, it's nearly the end of January and we're 12th. We've dropped another place mm. this weekend. We haven't won a game in 10. We're not in a false position. We are exactly where we deserve to be. Do you know why we get so much praise off of the managers and stuff? Because we don't beat teams. Because we beat us, yeah. You know, Gus Hiddink last week came out and said, Everton are a beautiful football team. He wouldn't have said that if we beat them. Yeah, but they've ended three no teams. Way. And it's great when, um, it's great when you, you see the press conferences and everyone always goes, oh, Goodison Park, such a tough place to go. It's not. It's not no. a tough place Ashley to Williams go. Ashley Williams said after the game, didn't he? He said, did you, did you sense the fans... 
you know, with a bit of discontent. Then he said, yeah, yeah, we tried to play off on it. Of course, it. but that's the point. Of course, this, this, of course we're discontented. Yeah. Of course we are. But it's not our fault. No. You know, um, let's just... Let's just move It's just so for the second goal as well. You know? Well, we scored from a set piece, hallelujah. And then I thought, 1-1, one, one, we'll settle down here. Mm. And then what did we do? We all went back again. We all went back again. Same, same with Leicester. Same yeah. with Stoke City. We've Went done our it, job. Got level. Yeah. We've done our job. Lads, chill out for a bit now. Sit sit back. Second half, we'll have a go. Just sit back, keep There's doing no, what you do. No, the problem is at home. There's no momentum built, ever. Never any momentum yeah. until the last 20 minutes. And, you know, again, going back to David Moyes' era, and I'm not saying, you know, get Moyes back and all that, but under Moyes, there was always, like, a wave, and you felt the fans, mm. and there'd be a wave, and you knew that the away team were, like, were under the cosh here. Crosses were coming in, shots yeah. were raining in. Yeah. The everything with this Everton yeah. team, it was the 80... I'll go just on, go, I'll go back to the goal, but it was the 89th minute yesterday and Stones and Murray are passing it along our back and you're thinking, we're 2-1 down. We wouldn't be we wouldn't Why? be this comfortable if we were 2-1 up. We'd be panicking and you're like... Get it forward and it, there's why, never an outball. Why isn't why isn't he putting the centre off up front or something like so that? That's you what know, I mean. You're it's, just it's, looking. You know, you, you've watched. It, you know, it's not the most glamorous thing, but you've seen it. Yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, there's, no there's no point putting a centre. There's no point putting a centre half up front when we're never going to go long. But why aren't we doing that? Because last we don't. Few, because that's against the, the principles. Because don't forget, we played well but got beat, so it's all right because we played well. Man, that's we just play well. No, no, but that's what he said. That's what he said. We played well. No, it doesn't mean I didn't know. When his first season, he brought back all this stuff about, you know, all these titles, we won't put images of us winning trophies yeah. all around, as if, like, this is a club that should be winning things. And as he's gone on, he seems to have gone, oh, you know, results aren't that really important anymore. We don't really need to, to be winning games. It's all about the performance. And he was trying to profess in his first season that with a big this is a club that win, that win Matt, things. With a big, That's what with a big like experiment for him. for him. And I don't know where he thinks he's going. Because I remember, I remember talking to Baz two years ago, and we were sitting there going, I'm, I'm really worried that Barcelona are going to come in for mm-hmm. this fella mm-hmm. and and you know we were thinking oh he's only got a couple of years but we were saying but well, you know what though he'll probably leave like a legacy for where like the next manager can come in mm-hmm. the next manager and it'll be like Swansea now I'm just like listen I actually just I'm, I'm no I'm just like rip it all up and start again please because yeah. that's the way I feel at the moment in fact if um, if, if Howard starts against Newcastle that for me is it he can go. He can be sacked. I guarantee he'll start. And it, well, no, I know he will. I, I know he will. But that, that for me is just like the most stupidest, ignorant, pig-headed thing now in the world. Playing that man in goal. I think, and I'm not going to go on about it because it went on about it last week. But that to me is like something that could be solved in like a second. And at the same time, I think if I, look at all this cl- the clamour over the weekend when there was like a few Twitter rumours and it started escalating. People like everyone was like, how it's not going to start? He might be getting sold. Everyone was made up, and then you look at the team. Know I know, but you look at the team sheets. Everyone ever went Howard. Yeah. Well, I think the thing. Look, he come in in the fit. I, I've said many a times. I didn't. You know, he wasn't the one I wanted. I wanted Thomas Tuchel, or someone like that. You know, we got Martinez, and he come in and thought, right, get behind him, because you know, yeah, he had done okay at Wigan. He won them a trophy, yeah. But I did say the defense terrified him. Two hundred and eighty goals in four seasons with Wigan. And he never corrected it. And a manager, good managers learn and they go, like, I've tried that and it's not working, I'll tinker it. And he came in in the first season. And obviously, we were still, it was Moyes' back five. Yeah. So they were still ingrained in getting in the way. And he just tinkered it beautifully. He would look dead intelligent. The substitutions were on the money. He brought Della Feyman. And we did, Lukaku, we played some wonderful football. And we just fell a little bit short. We were absolutely marvellous. And then he should have strengthened that summer and he didn't. And we started off it. The pre-season was garbage and everything else. And then last season, so people were calling for his head twelve months ago, and I was saying, no, you know, it's, yeah, it's frustrating, but I'm still confident we'll win the games we need to. It might just be one of those seasons. We'll get it sorted in the summer and we'll be back again. But the summer went on and nothing nearly changed. We nearly bring any. Yeah, okay, we got Della Fabian, that was fantastic. But the big area for me was another centre forward with Lukaku. We didn't address it. He went on about a number 10 and we didn't address it. A left side of player, he told us in a press conference, in a, an interview in the May, that mm. the left hand side was a problem and he was going to solve that. He didn't address it. And this season. We said, and he also said 12 months ago that he was buying a And the goalkeeper. Buying, was buying a goal the goalkeeper was the number one priority. He's, that's in the press. He said 12 months ago, we need a number one. I'm getting one this window. 12 months on, we've still got the same goalie. 
We're mid-table again. We've only won three home games. Yeah. It's still the same old, same old. And he, the, the biggest <coughs> telling thing for me, he doesn't seem to learn from his mistakes. No. And that, to me, is the scariest thing. Because as a manager, it is difficult because you set your team up all week. They cross the white line. He can't legislate for John Stones, not defend them properly. Or Tim Howard kicking people for no reason. Mm. But when it's happening again and again and again mm. and again, and he still continues to play him in goal, and he still continues to give the kid license to do whatever he wants, and he still allows Lukaku to walk around, and he still hasn't got an option, and one of the decent centre forward options he sold in the week, mm. that to me is t it's terrifying because we're now becoming irrelevant. Because you look, someone put a thing up at David Moyes. Last few seasons, and I'm not ingrained in medioc mediocrity now. Yeah. I forgot just how high up we finished under Moyes. It was always fifth, sixth. We were always around, and now it's going to be, it was fifth, which was great. Then it was 11th or 10th, whatever it was. Mm. And this year, God, I'll be dancing if we finish 10th. <laughs> and, yeah. and he's had more money than anyone else. And you're going, what's going on? I look at this squad and I think, most of these would get in any other team, or at least half but of like, them. That's, do you know what? Do you know what? Sorry, Matt. Just, I just want to. I thought one real. Sorry about that. No, no. I've gone start crying. One, one, one. There was one little incident right at the end of the game yesterday night. It summed the whole thing up for me. We were attacking. Never really looked like I thought we were going to score, mm. and I don't know if it was Ashley Williams or it was the other centre back, and he just got the ball, and he just lashed it, and it ended up in like the Swansea fans. Yeah. And it just, it, it just went. That was it. That mm. just took all their pressure off. And it just went to the, right, reset, we'll go again. And that was like in the last minute. And you're just thinking, imagine if we'd done that last week. Imagine if we had just put a ball, ball put a ball in our fans, yeah. just lashed it. As a, it was the, the lad only had one thing on his mind. And it was just like, I'm putting this right as far and we'll, we'll just start again. And and that to me, just tip And this is Swansea, who was supposed to be like Soft this football yeah. team. Yeah, but they knew they needed to win that game. They knew knew, knew that it, there was they had to win the game. Well, they are. They're bad, it's, aren't they? They're, you looked at them, you weren't... I didn't think they were anything good. No. But and they ne never and did. what have they just achieved? Back-to-back back back victories. Exactly. We have, what was that? We haven't done it since April, April? is it? Mm. But the, the thing that worries me is that he's, the starting eleven is essentially the same as his first season, but the players he's got now, Lukaku, Barkley, Develtheu, Stones... McCarthy, they're all two years older now, and you think they should be better. They should be, you know, they should be more savvy in games. They shouldn't know how to see games out more. But we're awful at it. We're worse. And you mentioned the word utopia there before. I think that's what he's striving for. And, and he, he says as much, doesn't he, in his quotes, we'll his press it, conferences, yeah. how we want to do things the right way. We don't want to kick balls into the corner. We don't want to, you know, waste time. That's that's just not conducive. You're not going to be able to do that at Everton because we haven't got players who are good enough not, for it. You know what, Matt? He could have Manchester City squad. Or Arsenal or Chelsea, mm. he wouldn't be able to do it there. And I'll tell you why. He'd be able to do it probably in Spain because mm. it's 10 miles an hour slower. You can walk around the pitch yeah. in Spain with the ball. Here is majority, it's an Ale House League, even now. It's, I, watched, I watched Norwich, a bit of Norwich Liverpool Saturday, and thought I couldn't see two worst teams ever looked in the Premier League. They were terrible. So you watched those? And I watched Everton yesterday, and it was worse. <laughs> And not as Liverpool, it was just long ball. The defenders didn't have a clue. Yeah. It was Ale House balls that got both of them goals. Everton, I don't know what he thinks. It's not all of a sudden like a jigsaw that's just going to go ch -ch -ch -ch, and the next minute we're 5 nil up and we, we have 100% possession. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It seems as though he's like still in that mentality of his first season to me and the, the football he wants to play. Instead of looking at the actual predicament we're in, the errors we're making and addressing them, he's still, he's still trying they're to play. Honest, they're, they're, it feels like to me though that the, the errors are like not our fault. They're like other circumstances. Like last it. couple of weeks, it's like it's been all the excuses. Like last week, it was offside. This week, it was there was a handball before one of the goals. There was a foul, and it, it's looking for all the excuses. The fans, right? Yeah, the yeah. fans don't ever start there was with a, the fans. We should have got a penalty. We haven't. Had we should have had a penalty, and we games. should have had. It should have been a handball before yeah, they scored before the, the first. Sec, but that's the second goal, wasn't it? Yeah, second yeah, goal, yeah. But the, but that's that's football, yeah. and those yeah. things happen. You know, um, I just I just I just don't know where he's going to go because I just I just. You know, you look at this week, obviously, two big cup games, and you just think, what's after I'm that? I'm not worried about yeah. the league. I, I'm really worried about the league. This Man City game is, I, I'm not asked at the moment because my head's yeah. that worried about the league because I just see us 
slipping. But I was watching, I was watching a bit of points off the bottom, bottom three. I was watching a bit of Sunday Terrified. supplements and um, Jonathan Northcroft was on it, friend of the show, <laughs> and um, he they were talking about the likes of Stones and Lukaku, and he just said, Roberto Martinez h- hasn't earned them coming back next year. He went, this was right. his big year. You know, he kept kept Stones. He probably had a few offers in the summer for Lukaku on the sly. Um, this was his year to say to those players, "This is where we're going." He's got. You look at the league. You look at how how wide open it is, and we're not anywhere near challenging for Champions League. And whether those players deserve it or not, mm. I mean, Lukaku probably does. But you, if you, <laughs> it's gonna be one of those at the end of the season when a, you know you always hear when a player goes. I want your Champions League football. And, well, hang on, you were part of the team. I think. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? He said this was a season he had to prove to those players that Everton could be a Champions League team and he simply hasn't proved it and they will leave in the summer and rightly so. Uh, mm. You know, If you're good enough for Champions League then go and play there. If your club's not good enough to strive for that. And it, it comes down to him. The book stops at the manager because whether we like it or not, he's allowed John Stones to get into that mindset you know, telling the fans to calm down what he does, Cruyff turns, you know, uh, doing what he did yesterday. He's, that is now his, man. The, the manager is, I don't know whether he has or not, but it's almost, it almost feels like the manager's pushed the defending, like we were talking about before, that side of it out of his game, where in yeah. the first season, it just looked like he loved Listen. header and balls with headbands on, you know, covered in blood. Now it seems like, he doesn't want to even it's head a ball. For it, now yeah. he doesn't want to head a ball. Now he just wants to take it down on his chest, do a slalom and go. And that player, I think, is less of a player than it was when he had those attributes. And I think, in long term, the player might suffer because of that. We'll have our fifty million in the bank, like. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're all gone. Sad, we're all just gone, just, aren't we? That's just... But it, I mean, what I mean. What are your real, f- I mean, fears? Because honestly, lo- you've seen it. Because loads of people want him sacked now, and I can't, I can't argue with that. And if, uh, like I said before, if Howard starts against Newcastle, then as far as I'm concerned, he can pack his bags and go. Because if he can't see the most glaring, obvious thing, I mean, this is obviously after Joel plays two games in a row. But if he can't see one of the most glaring, obvious things, then how can he see all the other things? I mean, that's the big one for me. I mean, Matt, I mean, I. So- I wouldn't act- actively call for anyone to ever get the manager to ever get sacked, but if we went out on Wednesday, I would not have any. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be sad to see him go. Put it that way. And just do the just issues there, like you mentioned there with the goalkeeper. H- how long it's been? You know, we've been saying this for over a year now that it's it's an issue with the team, and how if he doesn't address this this week, it's going to cost him his job. And every week we come on and we say, you know, this is a, this is an important game for us this weekend. We need to get the three points. We need to be solid. But he defend. seemed like he knew last year, like we say, we, he re- knew last year that he needed a new goalie. Yeah, but do you not remember talking last week about how we we had we seem to have found the structure and the shape and how yeah. it was working better for us? I remember saying, I'm concerned he's just going to go full Cavalier mode yeah, again yeah. now. And I said this two weeks ago. We he, we, he, for me, we can't there's, play. There's no. He, he seems to really struggle to put a balanced team out to put a team out who can be potent in attack and defend as well because when we went to City the other week granted we could see the chances but we dug in and we got a nil nil and we got out of there and there have been times under this tenure when we've gone to tough places and we have defended quite well and, and managed to take a point or counter attack and get the three points but there are other times when we're just so open it's like that, that Crystal Palace game I keep thinking back to that at the end of that match we were so open in that game and there's been loads of times mm. in, this, in this tenure when been flying forward one end, back to the other, and we just seem incapable of defending at those times. And this, the seems to have been a blueprint there for him the last few weeks. You know, obviously Bess has got injured in, in uh, at the weekend, and uh, cleverly he's not been fit. But that that blueprint of having one orthodox winger and then having a player on the left who tucks in that seemed to work for us. It seemed to give us a, a foothold in games, and he just went straight away from, straight away from that again. And he just doesn't seem to be learning his lessons. I had no issue with them playing with Alice and Delafeu yesterday. Cause I mean, I, the injuries I think, were a big thing. I there. think for me, it would have, we would have, you know, I think if Bezic would have stayed on it, it made a difference. Mm-hmm. It would have, because we would have told them, or, or the potential was there to tear them apart. And obviously, we lost both of them. We lost Bezic mm-hmm. and Morales, so that did upset the shape of the team. But it's not even that with me. It's the fact that I can't see, personally, any improvements. I can't see where it's going. To. Everton yesterday looked like. 11 lads who've just been turned off for a game of footy. There was no cohesion. 
there was no urgency. They're getting beat their own. There was no urgency. And everyone from the players to the fans, it looked like we all just went, yeah, we lose this game. It was, just, we, it was always going to be a game we'd lose this. And a lot of people, for me, worryingly are going, I'm not really bothered about Swansea. It's Man City on Wednesday. And I'm looking thinking, right, if it goes wrong against City, and don't get me wrong, we could easily go to City and turn on a great performance. Lukaku could have a storm and we win, or we draw and we get through, and that's marvellous. But if it goes the other way, come next Thursday without the League Cup, and when you look at those league places, that Newcastle game a week later is massive. Mm -hmm. It is massive. And <coughs> to me, there's no characters in that. Now Naismith's gone as well. There's no like kind of character in there who's going to be like, get stuck into these. We've got to turn this around. We've got no option whatsoever from the bench. If Lukaku gets injured, we are done. We're done. Because no one is there. Morales is yeah, but out. we're not a team that relies yeah. on Lukaku. Apparently, yeah. I don't know. But the thing is, there's no, we all know, we all know he's not going to go. There's going to be no pressure. No. There's no pressure. No, you know, it's, 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 it's well known, it's, it's well known the board don't set targets for the manager. You know, it's, what, what, there's, there's what, no, there's what no, board are you talking about? Do we have a board? Because, 17 to the target. Just to we don't up. have a board as far as I can see. I, I don't see the board. I can't see a board. I can't. I just, Baz has just gone, he's lost it. Um, <laughs> I just don't even know. I mean, I know it's, that's like a completely different thing, but it's not because we don't seem to have a board. And we all know, I mean, there's, obviously there's reasons, but why isn't there like, why, if if, that, if we haven't got a proper working board, then why haven't we had, why hasn't a proper working board been set up? Or why is, it just makes me mad. There's no one, how bad would it have to be for them to be sacked? You know, and but to be. I think we could be in a relegation battle. I don't think, I don't think we will get sucked into one, fingers crossed, but. I think we could still be in a relegation battle at the end of the season, be three, you know, points off, maybe teeter on the edge, mm. and he still won't lose his job. But would you trust Elstone? He's on a massive contract. Would you trust Elstone to make that decision? No. And is that is that his decision? Because I don't think that's his Everton decision. Everton haven't sacked the manager in fifteen years. You know, it's it's in in a way, it's great to 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 you know preach longevity and mm. you know that that's something which has gone out of the modern modern game, but. If you've got a manager who's under no pressure to perform exactly. and his players this is my are subsequently under no pressure to perform, then you become the, you become like a daisy. There's no pressure anywhere though, is that the media don't put any pressure on the club, the club don't put any, don't put any pressure on the manager, the manager doesn't put any pressure on the players. Uh, I, last week, our mate Pards yeah. came out in an interview afterwards and he just went, keepers had two terrible games, he knows that if he makes another one, he's out. Simple as that. He said that look on telly. Look at a team. He said that on yeah. telly. He said he know he knows. Think, and if he does it again, he's out. Think of a team like Spurs, who we've been, kind of, we've been kind of level with for the last yeah. ten years in the league. If they were in this position now, would their manager still be there? Would any? Uh, no, that's, a, that's, another thing. that's another no thing. That's another thing. That's another thing. How many? How many clubs who we love to think we're as big at would have put up with this? Liverpool got shot. Yeah. Spurs got in the red now and he finished fourth. He's gone. Villas Boas, I think, was six or Liverpool seven in the league. Sniffed, and they got Liverpool in sniffed at Klopp and just went, right, we're having him. You know. Liverpool got rid of Dalglish when he got, won one cup and got to the cup final and yeah. the other one, yeah, all right, he didn't perform. Well, we Imagine just, us winning the league cup and getting beaten in the cup final and finishing eighth. We'd, we'd, but it's all right. Because like we're the gentleman's club. We're the gentleman's club, so it's all right. And, and, he, and that's, not me, that's not me calling for anyone to be sacked. But the point is, is there's no pressure on him. It's quite clear there's no pressure on him. And now the fans are putting pressure on. He's having a go at us for, for putting for having. I want to see. I I want him to demonstrate to me and everyone else over the the next couple. He's not going anywhere. He won't be on too big a contract for us to get at him. So I want to see him demonstrate that he actually sees what we see and stop being so arrogant and thinking. I can see more than you, and, and these people who will quote, well, you know, you're not a Premier League manager. What, yeah. what would you want to? What? What, what would that address, entail? Then? Address the goalkeeping issue yeah. without a shadow. Of a that's doubt. my big. Sort that. Yeah. Get me a centre forward to sit on the bench. Coney's not doing it. Eight million quid being an hole in your pocket. Well, there was four yeah. million quid and one who actually come on and got the winner at the weekend. Who would have done us a job and we just left them well alone. Get me a centre forward. Get a bit of shape in that team. Mm. When the <coughs> team's together, if Stones carries on, get him sat by you with a, with a frigging tracky on. Start asserting yourself. Start showing people you're actually a manager who can lead 
cut all the crap out, mm. all the bollocks. If it's if he thinks he's good enough, get rid of Graham Jones, get a new or get rid of Fran, get someone in who's gonna mix things up because at the moment, this is bollocks and it's going nowhere. It's all bollocks. It's all Brendan Rodgers spin. And that's all it is. It's telling people and trying to convince people your beard's fit when there it is not. <laughs> she might have been a model 10 years ago and you're going, she's everyone fan. It's 20 bollocks. Years ago for or us, 20, yeah. It's bollocks. 21 years it's ago. It's literally, mine is still fit, but you know what I mean. No, but that's what it, it's trying to, you're telling everyone how great you are. But, when you're not. But yeah. we, watch when you're them, not. we watch them and there might be 10% of the fans who, who believe it all and are, are still getting swooned by his accents and all that, but... The reality is, it's about results. He hasn't even got his hair anymore. Football yeah. is about results, yeah. and and it's, it's about wins as well. Someone tried to. Someone was telling us before, oh, we haven't actually lost that many. It doesn't matter. Look at the draw column. It doesn't get you anywhere. It does not get you anywhere. You'd rather lose half and win half. I know. Half, wouldn't That's it? why, it like, you look sense. at some of the teams and they've they've lost more than us, but they're like six <clears> or seven points clear. He's obviously for me the manager is obviously he's a very very talented coach. There's no question the, the way he has the attack and formations yeah. and things like that. He's obviously very you know in that area he's excellent. I think he'd be actually an amazing director of football because he can see players. Yeah. He knows Boston players. Footy manager. Yeah. No, we would. Or a develop like in charge of a development co- group, development. something like that. It'd be unbelievable because his tactic, you know, not tactics, his actual ball playing and possession style is really, really good. But the Premier League is unforgiving, and you have got to be good at more than one thing. And you know, we people criticised yeah. David Moyes because we were too negative. We didn't get enough goals, and that only took us so far. But you know what? If you're tight at the back, it will take Taking you so long, far. Right. You can get results, and you can get you know eighth, seventh, sixth, mm. even. Yeah, you mightn't go any higher because you need that little bit of extra creativity. Yeah. But if you can't keep a clean sheet, there's only one place you're going to end up, and that's near the bottom. And we asked the, that's the thing for me as well. Like you mentioned there, what he needs to do, he needs to do something assertive and make some assertive decisions mm-hmm. because what's happening now just clearly is not working. Whether it's, as you mentioned, make a change to his coaching staff, maybe bring Gunsworth in, someone like him, you know, bit of bit of steel, something in, like yeah. that. Or change the goalkeeper. Do sort of decisive. That's the first thing. Do sort of decisive That's the first because thing. you change your goalkeeper and you go. You know what? I'm not taking this crap anymore. You you've made mistake after mistake after mistake. You're out, right? Joel, you're in. Let's give you five to ten games, ten games. and let's see how you get on. You and go. that's how you do it. And that's what it. And then if Joel is, dro- you know, if people still aren't convinced, and Joel isn't the answer, then but at least you'll know. And then in the yeah. summer you can go. Right, exactly. I want him. That's my biggest problem. If he doesn't rate Joel. And Howard's 36. Why why, why isn't he going to buy a new keeper? Why isn't he not even looking for a new keeper? Because he's clearly not. Because you, 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 we did all reports, or scouting reports and all the rest of it. You, not Everything gets out. He's got to start shaking things up. I know he's tried, and, and, but that's where you'd obviously start. And it's just a... It's just, he's brought, look, he's brought, we he are has, turning into Wigan. Simple as that. Sexy Wigan. He's done some good stuff, hasn't he? He's brought Lukaku yeah. in and McCarthy, Bezitz, Delafay. You know, some really exciting as players. As you mentioned, though, that's, that's the hallmark of a good director of football, not a good manager. Yeah. You know, if, it's, it's great getting but these the players. Wasted, aren't it's great getting these. Yeah. It's great getting all these players and being able to isolate them and go, "Oh, he's boss, he's boss. Let's get him in." You know, got him for a good price. That's brilliant. But it's putting all the pieces. You can't together. put the pieces together. It's that's it's the I think to model, me, isn't it? I think to me, <laughs> this is what's really, like, really upset me <laughs> more than anything. Is I know that within that group of players, there's some top players, and this, if you put someone in, you could see it. Everton could be very close this year. And it, you look at Leicester and you just think, and he's been great, don't get me wrong, but you just look at Leicester and think, if we had someone who could just organise us in a way, we've got players who could do real damage and we would win games. And like you said before, putting your foot through it, 70 yards, clearing it into the corner flag. When it comes, you just volley it away again. Yeah. Things like that's how you get results. And then he comes out and goes, we're never going to run the clock down. And you just go... What are you going on about? It's not the way we want to play. It's the way I want to play. I want to see us in the corner flag rolling our foot over the yeah. ball. That's what I want to see. I want to see clever. There's not one Everton player I look at and think, he's clever enough to take it to the corner flag and run the clock down. Pienaar. He's clever. Pienaar. Apart from Pina, probably the only one. Do you know what I mean? And that should be all, like you said before. And but no one even goes and challenges the referee cleverly. The only one. It should be six men around. Forget the respect. Bollocks. Because referees don't respect us anyway because we don't get any decisions. Yeah. Chase the referee down the pitch. I don't care. I, I, 
the respect, that respect thing is bollocks because we're the only team that does it. <laughs> other, other teams yeah. referee we're the, games we're the only team we seem to do lo- uh, just basically anything aren't we like that we're like the, oh, just soft just we so are the soft gentle, we're the gentlemen right there you go it's depressing isn't it could be goes to, could be goes away for you next month no but hey look will it make a difference though no I know but it will if we go and it'd be fantastic to go and win it of course of course it yeah and then that and, and we have got to be positive because it's a, it's a one off game got to treat it like a one off game but it's game. still that, even if we went there and won that there are still big issues to address. The stones of Lukaku won't stay if we win the league. Cup. It's not going to make any difference. Anyone who believes in this is absolutely bizarre. Well, that's for another video. <laughs> that's that's for shame. another video. Anyway. Right, tell us your thoughts on not only this game, but the managerial situation. Is Martin is the man for you? Tell us what you think. How did he miss, by the way? Oh Underneath the crossbar. Twice. Underneath. Uh, the tell crossbar. us what you tell us what you think. Shame on you. Shame is <laughs> cold. As well. And him. Can I rip it? No, 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 because we need it for more hilarious uh, jokes. And we just um, throw it like that. We nearly killed Bob. How dare you? Ah, she, proper man. Right, tell us what you think in the comments, not only about this game, about the managerial situation, what needs to change. Uh, who'd you drop? John Stones, is he getting too big for his boots? Tell us all these things. Don't forget to subscribe. Mm. On Twitter as well, it is at Toffee TV one On Facebook, it is facebook.com forward slash Toffee TV ESC. And we'll see you soon.